dear students, welcome to Lok Sattas Yashasvi Bhav. My name is Mrs. Jayashri Ramakrishna. You know, you children, when you pass the 9th standard final examination with flying colors and you go to class 10, the highest class in the school, you feel you are at the top of the world. All the same, you feel a chill running up your spine. Your heart skips a beat and some sort of a latent tension which is engulfing you. This is not the case only with you but also with your parents who are ready to do anything for you so that you score maximum percentage and you are ready to face the challenges of the world. Today I am going to give you a few tips on how to crack the maths and science exam in the SSC finals. When you talk about cracking maths and science exam, there are a few tips that you will have to bear in mind. The first one is set a realistic goal for yourself. You are your best judge and you know exactly what percentage you can score and where you stand. Once you have set your goal, the next comes time management. What is time management? Study your body clock and then set your study time. You know some people love to study late hours in the night while others wake up very early, they are early risers and love to study in the wee hours of the morning. See which time suits you the best and begin from day one of class 10. Frame a strong timetable and stick to that till the end. Begin studying very slowly and very systematically. Don't be a last person to start studying. You will miss your bus. You will be engulfed with a lot of tension, stress and strain. Medical studying every day, very systematic way of studying, will definitely bring success to you. How do we do that? Frame a timetable, fine. Start studying regularly, little by little, systematically. Now there are various ways of study. Take my advice. Make a separate notebook for all one mark questions. Repeat the process for all two mark questions, three mark questions and four mark questions. You know what you have to do in maths and science? Take it very lightly. How? While you are watching television, you can do your journal work. You can just browse through the chemical equations, browse through the formulae in mathematics. Try to learn the theorems when you are relaxing, so that when you are actually studying, you concentrate fully on your studies and you don't do the journal work or remembering your formulae at that time. Once you have done this, that you make a notebook, start studying and take frequent revision tests. Now when you are studying also, I would advise you that, say suppose you study for an hour continuously, give a break for 10 minutes, what will you do in that break? Stretch yourself, take a deep breath, hydrate yourself, drink a lot of fresh water, fresh juices and then you can indulge yourself in a hobby of your choice. For a short while, say a break of 10 minutes, come back again fresh to study. If at all you have a topic which is very difficult for you, you are not able to understand. You study twice, thrice, still you are doubtful about the topic. Keep the topic aside. Take a lighter subject, a lighter lesson. Complete that and then again go back to that particular lesson. In spite of this, you can adopt one more tip. If you have a study buddy, if you can gel with your friends, then sit for a group study. It will help you a lot because you can discuss the tough chapter with your friends and all the difficulties, the doubts will be cleared and you are free with that particular lesson. Once you have done your time management, the next one is have adopt e eating habits, I mean, adopt healthy eating habits. 
How do you adopt healthy eating habits? Always keep your body hydrated. Drink lots of water. Fresh fruit juices. Why? This will improve your blood circulation. You know, and you will be alert, and agile. Avoid binging on oily food, too much of fatty foods. The reason being, if you just binge on, say, wafers and fried stuffs, that will make you drowsy and your attention span, your concentration is reduced. So when you sit to study, you will feel drowsy and you won't be able to complete that particular ch chapter which you're supposed to complete within that uh, particular stipulated time. And this is especially applicable during examination time. Avoid oily food. If eight hours of sleep for every child daily is a must throughout the year. Because once you sleep well, your mind is fresh and you are ready for the next day's heavy course of work. All work and no play will make Jack a dull boy. Very true, you're very bookish and keep studying for eight hours and ten hours just like a couched potato sitting at one place will make you pretty dull. You do need outdoor exercises. Even though you don't go to the gym, go out and play for a while, stretch your body a little and you will feel alert and agile. After this, once you've started studying, you have to take frequent revision and tests. Call for as many old papers from different schools and start solving them. What's the advantage of solving these papers? You know where you stand, one thing. The second is, you get a good writing practice. You know where, how much marks, where you're going wrong. What are your weak points? What are your strong points in the paper? Ultimately, you have enough time to rectify them. Always make a habit of learning the formulae by heart when you're relaxing. And keep on revising your theorems off and on. Practice balancing equations when you are relaxing. Next is keep a positive attitude in life. You must always give an auto-suggestion. I can do it. I can crack it. Bear in mind one thing. The day your SSC exams are over, you will look back and say, had I put in more effort, I would have got some more percentage. And this is true in each and every student's case. Discourage friends and other people who try to demoralize you, who keep telling you, oh, this is very tough, you can't do it. Or SSC is pretty tough, don't go by that. Be very positive, be goal-oriented, be always cheerful, you can crack it. Ultimately, as I told you, there is nothing that is impossible in this world. The next one is HOTS. What is HOTS? Higher order thinking skill questions. Now in this higher order thinking skill, you deal with analysis, you deal with synthesis, you deal with evaluation, and finally creativity. See, all this don't pack it, pan it by this word hearts because this word hearts was there since long time, since ages, but with a different name. Those days they used to call it as D type of questions or they used to call tough riders in mathematics. Whatever it is, it is something to do with the application of whatever you have learned. There is a basic concept and a question will be given based on that concept, the answer for which you will have to think and you will have to write. For example, you have give reason question which can be easily converted into a hot type of a question because you analyze the facts there. Any theorem you have, from the theorem you are given a problem to solve, which is a rider. There may be two solutions to the same problem. So the creativity of that child is highlighted there. So don't panic by the word of hearts as if you're going to solve some very tough question. Absolutely no. Then just like hearts, you have something called as lots, the lower order thinking skill. When you deal with knowledge, you deal with understanding, you deal with remembering, and finally you deal with skill. See, in short, you have hordes of information in front of you. You have so much of information available on the internet. Actually, the future needs students' skill to process this information. 
and I'm sure you will be able to do it to the best of your ability. I congratulate the Lok Sattva Yashasvi uh, for their endeavor to motivate the children to crack SSE exams. Thank you and God bless you.